The Columbans is a very good work here in the Philippines. When people heard about Columban fathers, what will come to their mind is the care for environment, is the care for creation, the care for life that is very much inculcated in the minds of the people. Because in my local place, forest trees were being cut down because the logging owner was very rich, a crony of President Marcos before. So they are very powerful. And yet, the effects of this cutting of logging were massive because the rice fields were already flooded. It was the effort of the Columban fathers trying patiently to educate the people the importance of the trees, the importance of environment, and the connection of our lives to the forest, to the soil, to the water. It was the Columbans who really raised this awareness. Father Frank Nali, during his homily, he told the people, it seems sometimes our celebration of life and death of Jesus and resurrection is sometimes useless when our surroundings are dying because of the cutting of trees. Our faith is connected with this life around us. But where is life if what is going on around us are dying? So it is important that we have to reflect with our faith, with what is happening in our environment. After the homily, some parishioners stood up and asked the whole group, those who love to take care for their lives, who love to take care for the children, please remain and stay and we will discuss what we should do with this ongoing cutting of forest trees and to the surprise of everyone, everyone stayed in that mass. <laughs> so there they began this people power picket movement against illegal logging. All this began with the Colombians. So that's why Colombian has a very, very good work in the Philippines. I myself <laughs> is a product of Colombian. <laughs> they sent me to school to study agriculture. Still, now I am inducted and connected to Colombians. One of the biggest organizations in the Philippines is called AgroEco Philippines. They have almost 400 network members throughout the country. So their concern is helping the poor farmers, fisher folks in the coastal areas and also indigenous people. Because as you will observe in the Philippines, it's still one of the third world countries. So these are the communities, they are the poorest, the poor. Through agroecological practices, or we call it organic farming system, we are working on how we can re -re revitalize agriculture. The challenge in the Philippines with the introduction of chemical farming, the chemical agriculture, so with the problems brought with this system, farmers become indebted because of the synthetic and expensive inputs, which are also toxic, not only degrading their environment, but also the health of the people and the soil. So the seeds are lost because everything is bought to or from the multinational corporations, including genetically modified seeds, which are very expensive. Farmers are becoming very poor and dependent to these uh, multinational corporations and agrochemical companies, AgroEco is trying to help. First and foremost, they work on seeds. So they teach their farmers how to do breeding. Most of the people eat rice. The Philippines is very rich in terms of uh, local seeds. We have over 4,000 local varieties of rice. So what AgroEco did is to collect these varieties. This organization is very successful, trying to create, trying to reproduce and create new varieties new cultivars of rice seeds. These rice seeds are adapted to what is called natural climate, natural inputs, compost and rice straw, chicken dung, among others, meaning it suits to the local climate, to the type of the soil, to the type of environment. That's why farmers are happy you know, using it. In terms of practice, do not demand high cost materials, so which is very good. So farmers also in AgroEco are learning, always doing research on how to improve their organic practices. That's why you can see with them different, we call it farmer developed and adapted technologies, which are all agroecological practices. They have different you know, innovations on how really to solve their problems on soil fertility, pest control, which are all organic based. That is the good thing that they are doing.
But in the past seven years, we already experienced these massive uh, effects of climate change. The climate here doesn't follow the natural flow of the climate, meaning when farmers expected to plant what is suitable for dry season, it is a problematic now because the expected dry season becomes wet season. So there is this change. That's why the crops are suffering. Crops are dying. So it's a very big problem. Also, the landslide together with that, heavy rains, heavy winds that damage the crops. So it has a very negative impact to their cropping systems, to their yield. So with that, what are the coping mechanisms so that these effects of climate change would be minimized? So first, the good thing is that a farmer don't spend thousands of pesos for seeds because they are breeding it, they are doing it. So if there are typhoon, they are not really affected much. So that's one good thing. If your farming system is cheaper, meaning less cost, you have a greater chance. Whenever there are problems where the crop is damaged, farmers are better off compared to these conventional farmers because these organic farmers who use agroecological practices have a lesser expense in farm. You can easily bounce back. Huh? They are breeding varieties which are tolerant to different adverse climatic conditions. Now they can better tolerate the effects of climate change. For instance, I would give you an example. We have one farmer in Agroeco where he developed a type of variety where during the flooding you know, of about 23 days, all the rice fields around the conventional rice fields are damaged. But his rice field, because he is using an indigenous local variety, which are output from his breeding using the parents of the traditional varieties. After two weeks, he noticed that his rice, you no, know, it bounced back, it grows again. So with that, he was able to harvest 80 cavans. That's a lot in one hectare. So with this, he has discovered a cultivar of rice which is flood tolerant. And not only that, they don't buy any more pesticides. From their uh, local fields, they discovered this different herbs that can drive away insects or pests. One of the proven initiatives, a way to really cope to the effects of climate change is the farm diversification. So what Agroeco did is to inculcate to the farmers the importance of farm planning, learning how we can evaluate the farm and also put appropriate farm components suitable to your situation, the farm. One example is a farm in Bukidnon, Eunice Farm. He said, Bobby, in my place, my corn is dying. Cannot withstand this continuous rain because it is abnormal. But even if my corn fails to produce good harvest, because my farm is diversified, and I have fish ponds where I have different fishes, I can still harvest my fish with this continuous rain. So for farmers to be able to really become resilient to climate change, they should make their farm diversified, as opposed to monocropping. If all farmers in the world would really adapt the non-emitting greenhouse gas agriculture, which is organic, because in fact organic will help absorb this greenhouse gas, I think we can really make a big difference. And somehow we can help redirect this negative direction of global warming. So please, in your own local way, contribute. Do something. If you are a farmer, it's good. You have to practice whatever agroecological practice available and also do some research, find ways. So we have to do that so that we can help make this planet a better place for everyone. Thank you.